When I signed up to TED-Ed, I had the best of intentions. I wanted to learn about public speaking and take a chance I had never taken before. I knew what outcome I wanted. I wanted to make a speech that would be wise and witty, that would capture a take-home message in one heart-stopping phrase, and have my parents looking at me in wonder. Working on it would change my life for the better. After all, I had signed the commitment slip, and there was no going back. This was commitment with a capital C. I could even see myself, using my hands, just so, my voice modulated, just so, calm, considered, decisive. So when I sat down to write my speech, I was horrified to find my mind had gone completely blank. Nothing, nada, zilch, zero. I couldn't decide what to write about. Nothing seemed worthy enough. Or more accurately, I felt keenly how little I knew about each subject. I drove my parents nuts asking for ideas, until one day, exasperated, my mother said, write about how to make a decision. And I wish I could tell you that at that moment, the heavens opened up and bathed me in most glorious decisiveness. But they didn't. I wrote it down reluctantly and decided if nothing better came up, I would work on it. And so here I am, making a speech about making decisions. The amazing thing is, we should all be so good at this. After all, experts advise you make as many as 35,000 decisions each day, many of them without thinking. And in fact, 226.7 of these decisions are just about what to eat. And that's before you've even considered what to wear, how to say, what to say, how to say it, what to share on Instagram. Never mind the more important things like what subjects to choose for year 12 what uni courses to apply to, what jobs you might want to do. The weight of some of those bigger decisions is positively paralyzing. No wonder we feel tired and end up wanting to delay or put off some decisions. Researchers have found there is such a thing as decision fatigue. That is, you get so overwhelmed by the choices you have, you become incapable of making them. Ironic, right? And in that tired state, you're, you're more likely to make decisions you are very likely to regret. And it turns out this is closely linked to willpower. The American psychologist, Roy Barmaster, found we have a limited pool of willpower each day. And every little decision we make, every bit of self-control we exercise, depletes that willpower. Until at the end of the day, when you're tired and hungry, you reach for the chocolate and the burger instead of the salad and the quinoa and you spend time watching Netflix instead of getting started on that English essay. But the good news is there are tips for how we can make better decisions and exercise more willpower. And you can count them all on one hand. Number one, automate your daily decisions. Decide the night before what you're going to wear, what you're going to have for breakfast, what you're going to do when you get to school, when you get home, how you're going to get home. Decide it all first. Number two, do the important thing first. Preferably in the morning, when you have a full pool of willpower. Mark Twain said, if it's your job to eat a frog, it's best to do it first thing in the morning. And if it's your job to eat two frogs, it's best to eat the biggest one first. So we must learn to eat the big frog first. Number three, stop making decisions and start making commitments. What kept me going with TED-Ed when everything in me was screaming to stop? That commitment program I signed at the start of the thing. It would not leave me alone. It kept nagging at me. The only way to stop the voice was to do the thing. And so I've learned. Just say it publicly that you'll do it. And I promise your brain will not let you rest. It's conditioned to ensure you deliver. Number four, eat. It turns out BuzzFeed was right. A slice of wholemeal toast and a cup of tea really does solve everything. Don't make decisions when you're hungry. It seems your body needs some decent, healthy sugars in order to make good decisions. If you starve yourself, you'll deplete your willpower completely and become a decision nitwit. And number five, simplify. If it seems undoable, break it down into doable steps. Roy Weimaster puts it this way. If you must get cat food and find God, get the cat food first. Make a to-do list that's actually doable. The problem is we put things in our lists like write TED-Ed speech, when it's more effective to say write 20 minutes for TED-Ed, review, the next day, 
you need to make that commitment. You need to make it public and you need to make a very specific plan for exactly how you're going to do it. And then just do it. And if all else fails, there's a fail-safe plan. It's called positive procrastination. It's my kind of fail-safe plan. Give yourself permission to not do the thing you have to do, and then decide you cannot do anything else. And that's what I did in the end with TED Ed. I gave myself permission to not do it, and set a rule that I couldn't do anything else. And suddenly, researching decision making and willpower became attractive alternatives to doing nothing. And here I am. Thank you.